Okay, so in this lesson we're going to uh, start talking about how to solve log equations. In the previous lesson we solved exponential equations. So this time we're going to look at log equations. And a log equation is um, an equation containing a variable in the argument or in the log expression. So for example, um, suppose we had, now these are examples, or two examples of log equations. Um, suppose we had the log base 4 of x plus 3 equal 2. That's the log equation. So in the argument, you see the variable x. So you're taking the in this log expression, you have the variable x. You have the variable located in the argument. Another one would be something like this, where you have the natural log of x plus 2 minus the natural log of 4x plus 3 equal the natural log of um, 1 over x. Okay? So notice that that there are three log terms here and each of those each of those arguments contain the variable the variable x now the definition says basically you only need one of the terms to have the variable there so this could have been the natural log of six and and that could have been the natural log of two but as long as one of the arguments has that variable then it will be considered a log equation okay now what you want to do is solve for the variable x now, one of the um, one of the properties you're going to use to help you solve a log equations, a log equation to help you to get x by itself here, one of the properties you're going to use that you've learned in a previous lesson is the definition of a logarithm. So remember the definition of a logarithm. And basically, it it says something like this: if you have the log base b of m and that equals c. So you have this log, log equation. The definition says that I can rewrite this in its equivalent form and the equivalent form would be, and remember a log, logarithm is, is an exponent, so equivalent form, you see this is equal to c, so the equivalent form would be the base which is b, so you change it in exponential, to the c power, which is a logarithm, equals the argument to m. So you, you use this in a previous lesson. Um, in the previous two lessons. And so you're going to use this to solve some of these log equations. So for example, let's solve the following. Number one, suppose we had um, the log base 4 of x plus 3 equal 2. So I have this log equation. The log is by itself on one side. The coefficient is 1. All right, so you have to have that. You have to have that coefficient 1 before you can use this definition here. See, that has to be a coefficient of 1 here. If it was a 2 or a 3, you would have to divide both sides by that coefficient. All right, so in this case, it is a 1. So since the coefficient here is a 1, then I can, I can rewrite this log equation into its equivalent exponential form. So then we would say 4 to the second power equals the argument, which is x plus 3. And then all I, got, all I have to do now is just solve for the variable x. So 4 squared 16 equals x plus 3. And I want you to notice that I went from a log equation to a linear equation. So this is linear. So that's a linear equation. And all I have to do now is just solve is subtract 3. And so I get x to be 13. Now, um, and, and let's go ahead and check this. So 13. So, so 13 plus 3 is 16. So let's see, let's see if this makes sense. Does 4 squared equal 16? The answer is yes. So 4 squared 16, so in order for this to be 16, x must be 13, because 13 plus 3 is 16. Now one other thing you have to remember though, when, when solving log equations, remember you can only take the log, if I have the log of m, in a previous lesson we talked about the fact that the log, you can only take the log of a positive number, so this must be positive, so the argument must be positive. So when you solve for the variable in a log equation, you have to make sure that when you that you have to make sure that your argument is positive. Um, so this proposed solution, you have to plug it back in and make sure that the argument you don't have to check it or anything. You just got to make sure that the argument is positive. So when I substitute 13, is 13 plus 3 still a positive number? The answer is yes. Now you can go further and check it. 4 squared equals 16. And that's what we want it. Okay? So, so you do have to, you, you do need to 
you need to check uh, solutions. And basically, all you really need to do here uh, is to not really, you don't have to fully check this on a uh, test where it's timed. You just got to make sure that that this argument stays positive. So if I if I plug in 13, um, 13 plus 3 is positive. So the argument um, has to be positive. Okay. All right. So let's look at number two. Okay. So number two. Let's suppose we have this. All right. So number two. You have three natural log of 2x equal 12. Three natural log of 2x equal 12. Okay, well, um, remember we talked about the fact that, that the argument here in order to use this, the, the coefficient rather, must be 1. So the coefficient was 1 here and I went directly and I used this. And this is not the case here. The coefficient is 3. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to divide both sides by 3 because if you look at this, see this natural log? I am multiplying this log expression by 3. The opposite of multiplying by 3 is to divide by 3. And so when I divide by 3, 3 divided by 3 is 1. I'm left with the natural log of 2x equal 4. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So always make sure you simplify this. Don't leave it as 12 thirds. You need to write it as 4. Now let's go ahead and change this to a log equation. So I can, I'm sorry, exponential equation. So I, I can now change this to exponential form because this is now coefficient of 1. Now remember though, natural log has base e. So remember, ln has base e. All right, so we get e to the fourth power equals the argument, and the argument is 2x. And all you have to do is get x by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and there's your answer. 2 divided by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so I get x to be e to the fourth divided by 2. And so that's that's your answer. Now e to the fourth, and remember you have to check, so check to make sure, check to make sure that the argument is positive. So so when I substitute e to the fourth divided by 2, which is positive into the argument, and the argument is just 2 times x, a positive 2 times a this positive number is still positive. So, so notice, note, 2x is positive when, I'm, when I substitute this number into 2x. 2 times this is positive. 2 is positive. e to the 4 divided by 2 is also positive. So a positive times a positive is a positive. 2 times e to the 4th over 2 is positive. Right in zero. All right, number three. Okay, so number three. Let's suppose we had this. Um, let's see. Let's suppose we had. Um, okay, so let's suppose we had the natural log of of x equal two. Now the directions, and I don't have my calculator with me, so I'm gonna have to use a, another one. Um, but the directions also says that they want you to approximate the, the solutions to the nearest uh, two decimal places. All right, so here's what that means. Let's go ahead and look, do this one. So first of all, can I convert this log equation to an exponential? In other words, can I use this right away? And the answer is yes. And the reason is because this has a coefficient of 1, and the natural log is by itself. All right, so here, the the coefficient here was not a 1. So I had to divide both sides by 3 because right now I'm multiplying by 3. The opposite is divide by 3. Once I divided by 3, now I got the log by itself. And then I could use the definition of log to going from, from a log equation to an exponential equation. And so I can do that here. As long as you remember though that natural log, and this is natural log, the natural log has base e. So this is base e. So I'm going to say e squared equals x. e squared equals x. And then it's just a matter, so there's there's your answer. Um, uh, let's see, it says, um, give the exact answer. There's your exact answer. It's one of the things you have to do is give the exact answer. And then they want the answer to uh, approximate it to two decimal places. Two decimal places. 
All right, so use your calculator. Now, I'm using a calculator that that you're not using. Uh, but my calculator, I'm not sure where it is. So, so use your calculator and make sure you get what I'm about to write out. So, E squared. So, E squared is... Oh, okay, I'm finding it. Here it is. Oops. All right, so E squared... is 7.39 so x is approximately equal to 7.39 so make sure you get 7.39 in your calculator all right so that was that's your exact answer uh, so the so when you get x by itself without using your calculator that's the exact answer use your calculator you're approximating in this case okay all right number four okay number four suppose we had this suppose we had um, the log base 2 of x plus 25 equals 4. Equals 4. All right. Now, again, I have this log equation. Only one side contains a log. The other one is just a number, a constant. So the question is, can I go from this log equation to an exponential? The answer is yes, because uh, this coefficient is 1. So then I can convert this to an exponential. So you take your base, which is 2, and you raise it to the fourth power. So you say 2 to the fourth equals the argument, which is x plus 25. And so when I raise 2 to the fourth, I get 16 equals x plus 25. And then when I subtract 25 from both sides, I get, uh, in a combined like terms, I get x to be a negative 9. All right, now be careful. Um, some students uh, seem to think that x, when you're dealing with logarithms, x cannot be negative. And the reason they think that, which is not true, um, is because they're thinking of the argument. So remember, you can, uh, you, you can only take the log of a positive number. So this number here must be positive. And so they're seeing this and say, well, that's negative, so I can't use it. Now be careful. They're saying the argument must be positive. So if I substitute negative 9 back into here in the argument, it is positive. Negative 9 plus 25 is 16. So we're good. Negative 9 works. Negative 9 plus 25 is 16. And now check your, check your work. 2 to the fourth power equals 16. And so that's, so negative 9 is fine. So that's my solution. So the solution would be x equal negative 9. That's your solution. Now in terms of approximating, that's the exact answer. Um, there's no way you can approximate this. It's, it's uh, negative 9 is negative 9. All right, number 5. Okay, number 5, let's suppose we had this. Suppose we had the log base 4 of 3x plus 2 equal 3. Log base 4 of 3x plus 2 equal 3. Alright, so again, um, I have a log by itself. The coefficient is 1, so I'm going to go ahead and change this to, a, to its exponential form. So I'm going to say 4 to the third. 4 to the third equals the argument, which is 3x plus 2. And now 4 to the third is 64. So 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 is 64. Equals 3x plus 2. And I'm subtract 2 from both sides. I get 62 equals 3x. And then to get x by itself, I divide both sides by 3. And so I get x to be 62 over 3. And so that will be your answer. Alright, let's suppose we had this. Suppose we had 5. This will be number 6. Number 6. Suppose we had 5 times the natural log of 2x is equal to 20. 5 times the natural log of 2x equals 20. Okay, so that's very similar to what we did earlier. Um, the coefficient here is 5. It has to be a 1. So I am going to divide both sides by 5. So meaning this, just like this. And then when I reduce, 5 divided by 5 is 1. 1 times the natural log of 2x is the natural log of 2x equal, and then that's 4. And so uh, now I can change this to its equivalent exponential form. 
When we're dealing with natural logs, so I've got to use base E. Natural log is base E. So this is E to the fourth equal 2x. So remember, the natural log, see the base is E, even though you can't see it, remember that really means log base E of 2x. So this right here is really this. But we don't write log base E. We prefer to write it as the in, in its symbol form, ln. Okay, and so we say e, e to the fourth is 2x. Right here, this is 4. So e to the fourth equals, so e to the fourth equals 2x. And then all I have to do now is just get um, x by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And so I get x to b. I'm going to write it right here. x to equal e to the fourth divided by 2. So there's your exact answer. Now let's approximate this. So in your calculator, make sure you get this. Um, so you're going to say e to the fourth. Whatever that is, press equal. Whatever that is, you can divide by 2, and there's your approximation. So e to the fourth, and then um, divide by 2, and you should get 27.30. That's what you should get. Okay? All right, so 27.30. Now, it said two decimal places, so you have to have two digits here. So, so uh, this needs to be a zero right here, because it did say two decimal places. Okay, now, let's look at this. So this is number 7. So suppose at number 7, I had um, log base 5 of x plus log base 5 of 4x minus 1 equal 1. All right, so suppose I had that. Now, in the previous problems, in the previous six problems, notice that each, each equation, there was only one log one log term in each one, one log term. Here though, there are two of them. In order, in order to use this definition right here, I, it has to look like this. So I have to have one log on the left side or on the right side, but it has to be one of them and use, use this definition. So, so notice that I have got to go from two logs to one log. So remember in a previous lesson, you, you, uh, one of the problems said use the properties of logarithms to condense. So that's what you're going to do here. You're going to rewrite this in as a single logarithm. And so you got to remember some property though. You have to remember that the log base b of m plus the log base b of n is equal to the product m times n. The log of the product m n base b. So that's how you write a logarithm as a single log. So since this was addition, you're going to use the product rule. And so since, a, now remember in order to do that, though the base had to be the same, and they are, they're both fives. So you're going to say the log base five of, and kind of be careful when you do this, that's so going to be x times 4x minus 1, just like this. So x times 4x minus 1, and that's going to equal 1. So that's what we have so far. All right, so we have that. All right, now, now I can change this. Now I can change this to an exponential. So remember, I have the log base five of this. Now let's go ahead and put this in bracket though, because you're you're really taking the log of this whole thing. Um, all right, so we're going to say five to the first power equals the argument x times 4x minus 1. So that's where I'm at. Now this is going to be a little bit more challenging than these because if you recall when I did these right here I went from a log equation to a linear equation. See this is linear. I went from a log equation to a linear equation. This is linear. I went from a log equation to a linear equation, and so on. When I do this one now, watch, when I do this, I went from a log equation to a quadratic, because when you distribute, you see this x times 4x, that's 4x squared. So, so notice I get 5 equals, and when you distribute, you get 4x squared minus x. This is quadratic. So it's a quadratic equation. And so now you have to solve a quadratic equation. 
So remember, to solve a quadratic equation, you're either going to use a quadratic formula or you're going to factor it. But it's not always factorable. So you may want to just resort to using the quadratic formula. And so in order to use quadratic formula, though, this has to be in, in a standard form or general form for, for a quadratic equation. So which means that you have to have 0 on one side. So let's subtract 5 from both sides. And so I get this. I get 4x squared minus x minus 5 equals 0. All right, so let's use quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And so when I when I uh, um, substitute a, b, and c into this, keep in mind that a is a coefficient of x squared, so that's 4. b is a coefficient of x, so that's negative 1 now. Be careful. And c is your constant, which is a negative 5. And so when I plug these uh, values into the formula, I get this. x equal the opposite of b. So b is negative 1. The opposite of negative 1 is a positive 1. Plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared minus 4 times a. a is 4 times c, which is negative 5. All over 2 times a, and a is 4. And so when I simplify this, I get 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared is 1. A negative 4 times a positive 4 times a negative 5 is going to be a positive, let's see, 4 times 5 is 20 times 4 is 80. So positive 80 over 8. 4 times 2 is 8. So that becomes 1 plus or minus the square root of 81 divided by 8. And the square root of 81 is, 81 is a perfect square, so the square root of 81 is just 9. Now, since, since I no longer have a square root, this is going to be two rational solutions. So since there are two rational solutions, this is split it apart. 1 plus 9 over 8, which is 10 over 8, which reduced is 5 fourths. Over here, you have 1 minus 9 over 8, which is negative 8 over 8, which is a negative 1. OK, now. So before we go any further with this, when we're not done with this, before we go any further with this, let's just notice the difference between 7 and, and uh, let's say, number 5. So notice the difference. So here you had two logs. You wrote it as a single logarithm. You have to write a single logarithm. So this was subtraction. You'd write it as a quotient. If, if this is a product, you write as, I'm sorry, if this is an addition, you write as a product. And then you use your your definition going from x uh, logarithm to an exponential. So you change an exponential form. The only difference is that this was linear, which was much easier for us to deal with, whereas this is quadratic. So if you uh, now see how we ended up with rational solutions, then that means that this really is. Remember, the, the, if the discriminant is a perfect square, we learned that in a previous lesson. If the discriminant is a perfect square, which it is, it's 81. If it's a perfect square, you're going to get two rational. So which means that it, it's factorable. You could have factored this. But most students just want to just go ahead and just use this, uh, the uh, quadratic formula. So when you use quadratic formula, though, you got to be careful. you got to make sure all these a, b, and c, the values of a, b, and c are actually correct. You don't, do not make an error with this. Otherwise, all this would be incorrect. OK, so then I, I use a quadratic formula, and then I simplify. And here's what I get. Now remember, in a previous lesson, I'm sorry, in a previous problem, we said this. We said that that um, uh, when when you substitute the value of the solution into the argument, that argument better be a positive number. So so the so the value. I mean, I'm sorry. The the uh, uh, the argument must be positive. So it's got to be. Can be. It cannot be negative. So when we do this one, I want you to notice something, 5 fourths, OK? There are two log expressions here. you got to check both of them. You have to check both of them. So here, I'm taking the log of x. So now, you can only take the log of a positive number. So if I'm checking x, if I'm just looking at x for right now, I'm in the first one, excuse me. The first one has a positive 5 fourths. So, so I can take the log of 5 fourths. I'll get, I'll get a value. All right, now let's look at this one. 4 times 5 fourths, 4 times 5 fourths 
use your calculator. You got to be careful. Four times five fourths is five. Five minus one is a positive number. It's four. So we're good. Both of those, when I substitute five fourths in here, both of those arguments are still positive. Now let's look at negative one. When I go here and I plug in negative one to x, my argument's negative. I can't take the log of a negative number. And even and if you do this now, it only has two. Only one of them has to be uh, um, ha has to be an issue. In this case, though, both are more because four times negative one is a negative four. A negative four and a negative one is negative, and you cannot take the log of a negative number. You can only take the log of a positive number. So what that means is that is that this is not a solution right here. And it's not a solution. So so your proposed solution doesn't work. All right. So now the answer then, the answer are the solutions. And again, remember that can be more than one. In this case, is only one. The solution is that x must be five fourths, and there's your answer. All right. So remember, remember all that we just talked about is this. So let me just go ahead and remind you. Um, log expressions are defined. Log, logarithmic expressions. are defined only for logarithms of positive numbers. Okay? So I can only take the log of a positive number. So so you you must always check your proposed solution. So you must check the proposed solution. You must check the proposed solution. And you got to check in the original. In the original equation. Alright, so you check your proposed solution in the original equation. You're going to exclude, you're going to exclude from the solution set, from the solution set, any proposed solution that produces the logarithm of a negative number. Okay, so so when I check this proposed solution right here, negative one, it makes this logarithm negative. I mean, I'm sorry, it makes this argument negative, and I can't take the log of a negative number. Same thing here. If I substitute negative one into here, four times negative one is a negative four, and another negative one is a negative five. I cannot take the log of a negative number. It's 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 undefined. It's not defined. So this proposed solution I cannot use. So the only solution that worked is five fourths because because if I substitute five fourths here, I'm taking the log of a positive number. If I substitute five fourths into this argument, you got to make sure this argument's positive. Four times five fourths, I'm saying four times five fourths, the fourths divide out, so you look at five. Four times five fourths is just five, and five minus one is four, and I can take the log of four. Okay, so you got to make sure. You have to make sure you got to exclude any values for the variable that makes the argument negative. Now, be a little bit careful. This does not mean that every negative number doesn't work. We saw earlier that I can have I can have a negative value for x, and it's negative nine. Negative nine worked because when I substitute negative nine into the variable in the argument, negative 9 plus 25, is a positive number. All you have to do is just make sure that that proposed solution makes this positive. So the proposed solution makes makes any of these arguments, at least one of them, doesn't have to be all of them, at least one of them, the argument is, is negative, then I cannot use that proposed solution. All right, so the only one that worked was 5 fourths, so the only solution is 5 fourths.
All right, so let's look at number eight. Look at number eight. Number eight, suppose we had this. Number eight. Okay, suppose we had um, the log base three of x plus six plus the log base three of x plus 4 equal 1. All right, so again, in order in order to use in order to use the definition that we used at the beginning of the this lesson, this right here. So in order to use the fact that I can change this log equation to an exponential this uh, equation on, on in this case on the left side must be a single logarithm. So you have to convert this to a single logarithm. You have to condense this side. And so remember, I'm, I'm taking the log. I uh, Well, I am taking the sum of two logarithms that have the same base. I'm taking a sum of two logarithms that have the same base. So that means I can write this as a product, as a single logarithm. So my logarithm is going to be log base 3 and then my product. So I'm going to have x plus 6 times x plus 4 and that's going to equal 1 so that's what I have so I wrote this as a single logarithm and now you're going to convert this to an exponential so I get 3 to the first power so 3 to the first power equals the argument so x plus 6 times x plus 4 and then 3 to the first is just 3 equals x plus 6 times x plus 4 and now I got to solve for x I want you to notice that this is quadratic because if you follow this, x times x is x squared. This is quadratic. This is a quadratic equation. Okay? So I went from a, um, a logarithm to a quadratic equation. To a log equation to a quadratic equation. Now, the mistake people make is they'll do this. They'll say x plus 6 equals 3 and x plus 4 equals 3. You cannot do that. Remember, when solving a quadratic equation, um, by factoring, you have to have 0 on the other side. So you can't say x plus 6 equals 3 because that's not a 0 here. So, so that 0 factor property, remember this is referring to as a 0 factor property. So the 0 factor property only says that if you have um, at least two factors, a, b, whose product is 0, then one of those must be a 0, must be 0. But that's not what you have here. You have a product that's 3. So you cannot use this property. You cannot say each of those has to equal 3. That's not true. All right, so this has to be a 0. But what you want to do here, though, is just FOIL it out. FOIL this thing out. Write it as a quadratic equation in standard form, so that way you can use the quadratic formula. So when I FOIL this out, I get 3 equals x times x is x squared. The outer is 4x the inner is 6x and the last is 24. Combine like terms I get 3 equals x squared 6x and 4x is 10x plus 24. And now I want to uh, write this in standard form so that way I can have 0 on the other side. So I, guess I have to subtract 3 and when I combine like terms I get 0 equals 3 minus 3 is 0 equals x squared plus 10x plus 21. All right, and then if you notice, you can factor this because you, you can factor this as, let me just do that here, x squared plus 10x plus 21 equals 0. So if you factor it, you do get x plus 7 times x plus 3. And then you said each of those factors equal to 0. That's the zero factor property. So by the zero factor property, zero factor property is used here. So for the zero factor property, I can see you set each of those equal to zero. So you get x plus seven equals zero, x plus three equals zero. And so here I get x to be a negative seven and x to be a negative three. Okay? Okay, now um, I'm gonna come back to this in a little while, but remember I did this by factoring. Some students don't want to take the time to actually check and see if this is factorable. So let's just use the quadratic formula. So a is one b is 10 and c is 21. So remember we did it both, we did two ways. We did it by factoring 
and we're going to do by the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula says um, that that my solutions are going to be the remember it's negative b. So b is 10. The opposite of 10 is the negative 10. Plus and minus the square root of b, which is 10, but I got it squared. Minus 4 times a, a is 1, times c, which is 21. All over 2 times a, and a is 1. And so now, if I simplify this, I get negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 10 squared is 100. A negative times a positive times a positive is a negative. 4 times 21 is 84 divided by uh, 2. 100 minus 84 is 16. So negative uh, 10 plus or minus the square root of 16 divided by 2. And 16 is a perfect square, so that means the square root of 16, that's just going to be a 4. I get negative 10 plus or minus 4 divided by 2. So I'm going to end up with two rational solutions because I no longer have a square root involved. So I'm going to have two rational solutions. So you're going to say 10 plus 4 divided by 2 and then 10 minus 4 divided by 2. And that really is a negative 10, excuse me. Negative 10, that's negative 10. Negative 10 plus 4 divided by 2, and then negative 10 plus uh, minus 4 divided by, by 2. Okay, so the numerator here, that's going to be a negative 6 divided by 2, which is a negative 3, and that's what we got here. So this is this. Is this. And then here, we're going to have a negative 14 divided by 2, which is a negative 7, which is this. All right, so, so if it's factorable, then factor it. If you don't want to take the time and to factor, then go ahead and use the quadratic formula, just like we did. But always be careful when when simplifying this information here. Okay, now we have to check. Remember, remember we said right here. So check for your proposed solution. Check in the original. So exclude from these solutions any proposed solution that produces the logarithm of a negative number. So if you substitute any of these values right here into the original and you get the argument to be negative, then you cannot use that proposed solution. All right, so let's check negative 3. Negative 3 first. Uh, I know you have to use just check the just check the argument. What's negative three plus six? Negative three plus six is that positive? The answer is yes, that is positive. Here, what's negative three plus four? Well, negative three plus four is one. Is that positive? Yes, it's positive. So we're good. So one works. I'm sorry. Negative three is a solution. Now let's check negative seven. Negative seven plus six is a negative one. That argument's negative, so I can stop there. I don't even have to do the other one. As long as one of them produces a negative argument, then I have to exclude this proposed solution. So when I plug negative 7 to here in the first one, negative 7 plus 6 is a negative 1. I cannot take the log of a negative 1. So I cannot use this one. I'm just going to cross it out. And so my answer, my answer will only be x equal negative 3. That's the only answer. Okay, so notice, notice you have to check your solutions when dealing with the log equation. You have to check, and all you do is just check in the argument to make sure it's still positive. All right, number nine. Okay, number nine, suppose we had um, log base two of x plus two minus log base 2 of x minus 5 equals 3. So log base 2 of x plus 2 minus log base 2 of x minus 5 equals 3. Okay, now just like before, the, the coefficient of 1, which, which is good, but I've got to condense this. So I have to write this as a single logarithm. But notice this time, this is subtraction. So when we had addition, when we had addition, I wrote this as the log of a product. Now, this is going to be the log of a quotient. So, use the quotient rule. And so, basically, basically, you're going to rewrite this as the log base 2 of some fractional expression. So, you have x plus 2. Always put the uh, first term in the numerator. 
or the first argument in the numerator. And the second argument will be in the denominator. And all that's equal to 3. So that's what we have so far. Now I, I wrote this as a single logarithm. The, bay or, um, the coefficient is 1, so I can use the definition. So I can go from a log equation to an exponential, to its equivalent exponential. So this base is 2, so I say 2 to the third. 2 to the third equals the argument. x plus 2 divided by x minus 5. 2 to the third is 8, so I get 8 equals x plus 2 divided by x minus 5. Now, I want you to notice something. This 8, I can write as 8 over 1. And you learned about something called a proportion in a previous course. A proportion is where you have a fraction equal to a fraction. And to solve a proportion, let's say proportion, but it is linear. It is linear. L-I-N-E-A-R. It is linear. But it's a proportion. I'm sorry. Um, when you cross multiply, excuse me, I need to be careful here. To say proportion, let's just call it a proportion right now. All right, proportion. All right, it's going to end up being linear. Okay, so when I cross multiply, remember to solve your proportion, you cross multiply. So I get 8 times x minus 5 equals 1 times x plus 2. So this is linear right here. Okay, this right here is rational. Remember, that's a rational equation. So a rational equation is where you have var an equation with variables in the denominator. That's rational. So it's not linear. It is rational. And when I cross multiply, I end up with the linear equation. Okay, now let's distribute. I get 8x minus 40 equals x plus 2. And so I'm going to subtract x from both sides. So 8x minus x is 7x minus 40 equals 2. The x, x minus x is 0. Add 40 to both sides. Combine like terms. I get 7x equals 42. And now I'll divide both sides by 7, and I get x to be 6. So this is my proposed solution. That's my proposed solution. I just got to make sure that it actually works. So all you have to do, all you have to do is just make sure that the argument is positive. 6 plus 2, is that positive? Yes. 6 minus 5 is 1, is that positive? Yes. So we're good. So my solution will be um, 6. So the solution is x equals 6. All right. Now notice we did it again. So we wrote this as a single logarithm, so I had to use the quotient rule here. And so I then converted it to an exponential. I did a number with 2 to the, 80s, 2 to the 3rd is 8. I did notice that this was a proportion. So since that's a proportion, it is rational though. That's a rational equation because of the variables in the denominator. Since that's a proportion, I cross multiply, cross multiply, and then I get an equation that's linear. And so I distribute, I solve for x, and I check the proposed solution. So this is actually the solution. So the solution is x equal 6. Okay, number 10, let's do one more with this. All right, number 10, suppose we had, um, let's see, that was some trying to, which one did I just do? Um, okay, so let's look at, at this one. All right, suppose we had the log. Of, a log of x, excuse me, log of x plus the log of x minus 3 equal 1. So the log of x plus the log of x minus 3 equal 1. Okay, so so I have two logs. I am adding these. The bases are the same. See, remember, this is a common logarithm because the base is 10. There's no base there. It's understood to be a 10. All right, so that's a common logarithm. So I can I can uh, condense this to single logarithm. Now, remember, the only way you can do that is if these are 1s right here. These have to be coefficients of 1s. So then I get the log of, um, and put this in bracket, x times x minus 3 must equal 1. So now I have this single logarithm. So now I can convert this, convert this back into an exponential equation. So my base is 10 right here, so I say 10 to the first equals the argument, x times x minus 3. And so 
So notice I went from a log equation. Now this right here is actually quadratic because when I distribute, I get 10 equals x squared minus 3x. So this is quadratic. And so let's go ahead and change this to standard form. So I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. Combine like terms, 10 minus 10 is 0 equal x squared minus 3x minus 10. Now this is factorable. It is factorable. So if you want to factor, you would get 0 equals, and that would be x times x is x squared. Uh, I need a negative 10. So uh, I need the sum, the sum to be a negative 3 for the outer and the inner. So always check the outer and the inner. The outer and the inner must be negative 3. So the only thing that works would be if this was x minus 5 times x, uh, oops, I did x twice, times x plus 2. So x minus 5 times x plus 2. And again, you can always check yourself. x times x is x squared. The outer is 2x. The inner is negative 5x. When I add them up, I do get negative 3x. And negative 5 times 2 is a negative 10. That's what I wanted. Now, remember, I'm going to use a zero-factor property now, zero-factor property. And so the zero-factor property says I set each of those factors equal to zero. So if, if I have two more factors equal to zero, then in order for that to happen, in order for that product to be zero, one of them has to be zero. So I said both of them equal to zero, so I get x minus 5 equals zero, and I get x plus 2 equals zero. So here, if x minus 5 equals zero, that means x is 5, and over here, if x plus 2 equals zero, that means x is negative 2. Okay? Now remember, you got to check your proposed solution. So all you do is just take these numbers right here, so these, these proposed solutions, so in this case, 5, and you go back to the, to the argument of the original. So here is just x. So can I take the log of 5? The answer is yes. Over here, the argument is x minus 3, so x is 5, so 5 minus 3 is 2. Can I take the log of 2? The answer is yes. So 5 is going to be a solution. Now for negative 2, though, when I when I go and plug that back in, remember all you have to do is just check one of them, uh, is, is for one of them to not work and, and you can't use that solution. So when I plug in negative uh, 2 into this, this argument right here, it automatically becomes negative. The log of a negative 2, remember you cannot take the log of a negative number. So, so this proposed solution I can't use. Okay, it makes the argument negative. All right, so x equal 5 is the only solution. Okay, now, remember, um, most, a lot of the quadratic equations is not always going to be factorable. So let's go ahead and solve this quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. Let's use the quadratic formula. So, so this was my quadratic equation right here, x squared. So I'll put r here so you could have done this. So r you can use the quadratic formula or use the quadratic formula. So, so my equation was x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0. So a is 1, b is a coefficient of x, so that's negative 3, and c is your constant, so that's negative 10. And all you do is just substitute it back into the formula. So remember the formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so the opposite of b, so b is negative 3, the opposite of negative 3 is a positive 3. So x equals a positive 3. Plus and minus the square root of b squared, so that's negative 3 squared. Minus 4 times a, a is 1, times c, which is negative 10, all divided by 2 times 1. And so simplifying this, I get 3 plus and minus the square root of negative 3 squared is 9. A negative 4 times a positive 1 times a negative 10 is a positive 40, all over 2. And four plus, uh, 9 plus 40 is 49. Now what that means is this. You remember in a previous lesson we talked about the discriminant. Well, the discriminant is that b squared minus 4ac is that radicand here. So this is your discriminant, this is your discriminant, this is the value of the discriminant, 49. 
we learned in a previous lesson that if the discriminant is is uh, a perfect square, if the discriminant is a perfect square, then your um, your solutions your solutions will be rational solutions. Right, they'll be rational solutions. Okay, which which also means that that this equation is factorable. So see how this is forty nine. So 49 is a perfect square. I'm going to get rational solutions, which also meant that, that uh, the left-hand side or the right-hand side is factorable, and I can use a zero-factor property. But many students, they just prefer to use a quadratic formula. So since 49 is a perfect square, you got to simplify this. So this becomes 3 plus or minus, oops, sorry, 3 plus the square root of 49 is 7 over 2, and 3 minus 7 over 2. 3 plus 7 is 10, so this becomes 10 over 2, which is 5. And remember, that was one of those that we wanted. Here, 3 minus 7 is a negative 4 over 2, which is a negative 2. Now, your proposed solution can be negative. You just got to make sure that, that the argument stays positive when you substitute these numbers back in. And right away, when I substitute negative 2, this argument right here is automatically negative, so I can't use negative 2 at all. So the only solution is is um, x equal uh, 5. That's your only solution. Okay? All right, so um, we're going to stop here with this part of the lesson, and um, I'm going to do a few more problems like this in the next part of the lesson or the lesson after the, after the next one. All right, so that takes care of this lesson.